Hey, it's White Boy Chris. If the Pat Downs ever made you laugh, then join our Patreon and support us. Get bonus content, a t-shirt, or an autographed copy of Rabbit, Miss Pat's autobiography. Visit misspatcomedy.com for the link to the Patreon, and while you're there, join our Facebook group. Welcome to another episode of the Pat Down. We talking about everything from killing us to fucking us. <laughs> With hot dicks. With hot dicks and gunnery vagina. Just stay tuned after the music and we'll be in there. You better get up, get out, and tune into this podcast. This Pat spit the truth, spit the real fact. Nothing but the ugly, classy at the same time. Pat got the flavor, these are not the same lines. That's the politics, she been on the real grind. It could be pretty but ugly at the same time. Just tune in, put your lock on the spin down. Ain't no need for the wait and turn her up now. What you talking about? It's real though, and cut the game, you get no play like Nintendo You waste the time, turn the up, nothing but the ugly Straight off the top, everything she say, you know it's funny Full plans, this is a taste of the future Listen on your iPhone or your desktop computer Share it, tweet it, ain't no way to beat it Nothing but the ugly, turn it up and gon' repeat it Alright y'all, we coming back in from the next podcast, they still fucking like uh. My stomach hurts. We actually added a new guest, which was my brother from prison. We're going to try to keep him around. You'll hear that in future episodes. Yeah, we're going to try to keep him around. What y'all think? He was, yes, definitely. I mean. Can we get him to commit more crimes so he stays in jail? Just stays in jail. Oh, fuck. (laughs) He's a dreamer, though. (laughs) Big dream ahead, you know, buy a food truck and then boss people around. Oh, Uh, shit. First of all, okay, two people can't even fit on no food truck, so where you going to supervise outside the one? Right. (laughs) Nigga, I'm like, are you Is he a bigger, what does he look like? Is he a bigger guy? Is he Bigger guy, uh, light skin. Is he he built like Gary or is he built like... he built like uh, Garrett. I'll show you a picture. I'm worn out, man. I'm worn out. Like, my stomach hurts. Like, Well, it's, we like, need to laugh. I think it's, it's honestly, it's like, because everybody's home all the time, everybody's just kind of stewing on social media all the time, and oh, then you man. add in, like, horrible things that just are preventable tragedies, and then everybody's arguing all the time it's just like the pressure builds and builds and builds and then we come here and it's just so much fun yeah yeah you need to bust a nut coming at the miss pay house to bust a nut and laughter <laughs> so uh is there a new move slogan tables. <laughs> no. oh, move tables be, be a slave bust a gut <laughs> well shit them tables heavy as fuck i got some tables redone y'all i'm gonna show them to you on a picture but um i had to get them back in the house shit i, I was gonna throw them away but the lady convinced me of redoing them so I'm, I'm down to the wild with all my projects in my basement. I can't stop talking about my basement. Wait, I'm you were going to throw them away? I was going to throw them away, and they weigh about fucking, what'd you say, 200 pounds a piece? <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, 100 and 150. I don't know how much that t- that long table weighed, but that that little table I probably could have picked up by myself. It wasn't that heavy. Yeah. Well, that big one was really heavy, and the one she bringing back is very heavy. I've had them since the early 2000s. And I bought them from Harity Furniture, the only place that I can buy furniture that holds fat people. How much did she charge you? She charged me, I don't remember. Because she hustled you if you were just going to throw them away. <laughs> you could have saved yourself some money. Well, no, they're really good tables because I was going to redo them. And I was like, I really don't want to be bothered with this shit. And so she was like, you know, I, I can redo them. Well, she, was, she had painted my kitchen cabinet. Uh, so I knew... Uh, I knew she could redo them. Is so she a painter? Or is she what is she? A she paints. She paints uh, kitchen cabinets, and she redo kitchens and stuff. Like she okay. did my cabinet. She did my kitchen here in the basement. Yeah, it looks great. Called Bellflower. What's the name of her shit? Bellflower. Yeah. So you you redid the wet bar. The backsplash looks amazing. All the tile work looks really good. New marble. Is it marble or it's what? quartz? Quartz. Mm hmm. And then you walk in, there's a new entertainment center that you hand built. Well, not by myself, my husband. We built it together, me, my husband, and my kids. Yeah. So we're going to put some face frames on it this weekend and hopefully get a couple of the doors, and then she's going to come get it and paint it. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, so it's coming along pretty good. It's, it's You know, my husband can only work on the weekend, and so since it was so many a little nip-nack things were ahead of finish, we wasn't able to quite get uh, 
you know, to the entertainment center like we wanted to. But last week he put a couple of phrase frames on. This week he'll, he gonna build at least two of them motherfucking dolls. He ain't gonna sleep till he build two of them motherfucking dolls. Is he aware? <laughs> so while you you didn't carry the table with him. But, no, no. But I was carrying the table with him, and the entire time I was looking at his hands. <laughs> what what, what <laughs> they look see like? See if they were dying hands or not. <laughs> they skinny as fuck. He do got dying he, hands. He's got to have a hand surgery because he has some issues. Yeah, like it's like it's not carpal tunnel. It's from um him lifting those transmission parts, and so one of the uh one of his arteries got clogged. It, I say it was Popeyes. But they say <laughs> <laughs> the biggest transformation is this movie room that we're in right now with these enormous movie theater chairs, the big movie theater screen. It looks awesome in here. The crazy part is when I ordered, I ordered 15 movie chairs, right? Right. So this black dude bring them out. You know, you always try to hustle. Hey, man, come on, put these chairs downstairs. You know, I give you a couple hundred dollars. And I was like, I said, I got it. I'm just going to hustle. Because when you when you call the company and order the chairs, right. they want to charge you like a 1000 to $1,200 to bring the chairs in and set them up. Well, uh, I didn't want to pay no $1,000. So I said, fuck it. It can't be that bad. Nigga, these chairs were 700 pounds a piece. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. I mean, it took us all. For, we had to take naps in between. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So one nigga can watch the movie at a time. Juma was knocking his toenails. He's like, why didn't you just pay the thousand dollars? I didn't know they were going to look like this. <laughs> Poor Raymon. Oh, we what it was is Gariana and Raymon got it out the pallet. This man put it, he was like, Why the fuck would they jam these pallets together? He was cussing and shit because it was just him and his pet bull dog. So he said all of this shit. <laughs> 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 nigga brought a pit bull to move movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> He brought his fucking dogs. I mean, he brought he he put them all out the pallet and then he just sat them now. And he was sweating like a motherfucker. He was out of shape like us. And he said, look, I used to move a lot of furniture. He kind of showed us how to roll them in. Yeah. Because they got, these chairs got the shakers in them. Like if you at the theaters and they uh, shake. Oh. And so they so fucking heavy. Then this, this piece right here was in there, which is the tay table. And all the other little beans and bells and wolves. Oh, it was so, we get it down to the landing on the steps. And we had to, it came in two pieces. It breaks down in two pieces. Yeah. Shit. Junebug got the bottom piece. And I called hell take to, to, to the back part. And and I was just bringing nothing but backs in. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was heavy as fuck. But, you know, it's almost, I felt like um, Red Riding Hood. Is it Red Riding Hood? Little no, Red Three Red Little Red. Pigs. What's the story you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, a wolf's eating one of them, yeah. What? You know how oh, you get to enjoy the pudding, the the, the, the oatmeal, <laughs> Goldilocks, nigga, <laughs> the three bears. Yeah, bitch, I'm forty something years old. I can't remember that story. I just remember oatmeal was involved. <laughs> Fuck, is you laughing? At? It just the mangling of poor Aesop's fables. <laughs> I don't know what's fun. You get Red Riding Hood and Goldilocks confused. Them what did them bitches had on a like... cake? I don't give a fuck. One of them had a Three cake little on. pigs, Billy Goat's Gruff. <laughs> <laughs> the Nancy fruit and the moss covered <laughs> Oh, those, those grasshoppers and ants. <laughs> fuck y'all. The fruit of your own labor, you get to enjoy. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Why you fucking laughing at me? The point of the story is she was enjoying the fruit of other people's labor, <laughs> which is applicable here, yeah. No, I, I did good. I helped out too. I painted and. Oh, my body was so fucking sore. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, I had to sleep like a fucking mummy for like three weeks. My body was so, so clamming up on that lap. Then I'm like, oh, and I still got a little shit to touch up there. And I'm going to touch it up tonight and tomorrow. So it was kind of rough. It was kind of rough, but, you know, we got through it. We did. We got through it. So we we had three great episodes, y'all. We got to talk about the dumb shit that's going on in America. You know, make sure y'all get out and vote in November. I'm telling you up front, I'm voting for Joe Biden. Like I said on another episode, I like my racism in dose, doses. I don't like it all in my face, rubbed in my face like butt on my titties. I like my shit to come at me slowly. Um, um, <clears throat> the crazy <laughs> shit that's going on. I think you're quoting Martin Luther King here, aren't you? I don't know who that was. It could have been Malcolm X. It could have been. I have a dream. My racism don't sit on my titties. <laughs> Rub that racism on my balls like bean butter bean. 
Uh, I had a dream. I had a food truck. I've I, been I, to the mountaintop. Y'all gonna stop talking about and I was a supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking D.I. They talking about my brother. He get called from jail. He said, and he said when he get out, he going to be going to get a food truck. I my own dick. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all so fucking stupid. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about something a little bit more serious, which was the shooting of, uh, what's his name? Well, he wasn't he, shot. He wasn't shot. It's George, oh, shit. George so Floyd. It's yeah. George Floyd. You're getting your niggas confused. Oh, yeah. So many of them. Um, just putting, just the officer killing them like that. And, you know, I was sitting here thinking when, um, before you guys got here, I read an article where they locked him up. And I'm like, we, we literally had to go through all of that shit. To get this man locked up, all they had to do was just lock the man. From now on, y'all, and when you, when they kill black people, just lock them up, just to to keep the ride and shit down. Here's the thing: in most states, you get forty eight hours to detain somebody, so yeah. they could have just detained him. So essentially, well, it took him forty eight hours to find a nigga. So if you're not familiar with the story, George Floyd was arrested. He's I, I thought it was because uh, who's the basketball player that he's friends with? Steven Jackson. He, I thought it was his twin because he calls him twin. But and so, he he's a big dude, and this officer is literally has his knee on his neck for nine minutes and chokes him out. He's he's saying, "I can't breathe, I can't breathe," and then he ends up passing away. The officer is a problematic officer. Amy Klobuchar actually let him off of charges in the past. That's come out in the last like twelve hours. Yeah, he shot. Is old people. for you, Amy Native- Klobuchar. He shot a Native American in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a bad motherfucker to kill a Native American. Who the fuck know where they at? Yeah. And so right before we did this podcast, it was announced that he was arrested. And so in that situation, like I'm I imagine that they have to have some semblance of an idea of what they're gonna charge the guy with, but it's very clearly some form of murder or manslaughter. But so you're saying they had forty eight hours. Murder three. Murder three. Yeah, okay. but that, but they no can good. they can detain you. They can detain you for a number of bullshit things. And they and fired, then, there are three cops standing around that all, and so they fired them within 24 hours, which I couldn't believe because cops never get, oh, we've got to go through administrative you pro- fucking unions. And, right. When it's clear cut, dry video like that, it's not grainy, it's not shaky, it, you know, it's not. There's a lead up where he was being passively led. You, he was never resisting the ever. rest. And you know, the thing is, you guys, you know, and I know I have a, a lot of white conservative follow. I have a lot of white follow. I have a lot of black. Oh, you know, I think my follower, my fan base is very diverse. And people literally try to get mad at me for being black. You don't have the fear that I have. You know, I have a 20 year old son and I have a 32 year old son that every day that I wake up, that I'm scared that somebody is going to fucking harm my child because they're races i'm a little bit more comfortable with nakia now because he, he works in the he works in the police field so i'm not as worried about him because he always got on his uniform mm-hmm. i told him nigga just wear your uniform on your day off mm-hmm. you know don't even take your uniform off okay just wear that shit if i need to fucking buy you some extra shirt keep your uniform on and it just you know like when Ju- my june but we want to go out and hang out and as a black parent, it's the scariest shit in the world when your black child leave out that door because you don't know what they're going to encounter. And I can guarantee you, every white listener listening to me, you never have you never have that thought in your head and you don't know how that fear fear feel. And if you've been following me long enough, you know, I've said it over and over again. I'd rather fight breast cancer than to fight the fear of having my I'm wondering if some race is going to kill my fucking child because of skin color. A police officer, he got twists in his hair. He too black. He scared me. You know, literally videos have been popping up all over America where people are just being racist. You know, I'm not saying don't be racist. If that's your shit, be it. But then don't get caught and apologize for it. Don't make excuses for racist. You know, like the lady who fucking with the dog. They literally... Tuck this bitch dog quicker than they locked this police officer for killing somebody. And when they made that dog, they made nine million of that same breed, the same pussy. All they pussies in the same place on the dog. All them shaped alike. All them look alike. It was only one George Floyd. The dog. The lady in the park. You see Amy that? Amy Cooper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She, they tucked that bitch dog so quick. Yeah. So white people, if you hollered out and said, 
she abused that. She was choking that motherfucking dog out like the dude got choked out for the cigarette that time. Eric Garner. If you if you gonna take a dog that quick, but you can't lock a nigga up that quick, you knew right then and there that crazy bitch should have had that dog. That dog Tom was hanging so far out his motherfucking mouth, I thought it was a foot dragging the ground. She she took the dog back. They didn't come and get it. She took him where? She took him back to the shelter. She got him, bro. She. They didn't come get the dog from her. Well, they streamed on internet. She didn't need the dog. So she knew it was a matter of time. She had to turn the motherfucking dog in. After seeing you choke the dog, then kind of found out the bitch was kind of crazy, too. She was, the bitch was crazy. But I don't want to take nothing from what we were talking about, uh, 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 George Floyd. But I'm just saying, the same energy people use to get the hound that lady for being racist and getting that dog out of her cuss is the same energy we all fucking need to use when police kill no matter who the fuck they are i don't understand why they were all out guarding his house like who what the police, the police they were guarding the policeman's house yeah yeah he for two days they were at his house armed guard 24 7 well they had to they was gonna run up in no there. they had to lock him up yeah. well they did have to lock him up we wouldn't know where he lived if the nigga was in jail well, they wouldn't have doxed the nigga if you'd have just arrested him that's all we don't ask. let him clock out because the system will always protect itself. It, yeah. it, it doesn't matter from the top down. I will use the military against you if you keep doing what I don't want you to do. From Which the is top so down. fucked up. Well, and then, you know, people always like, well, just let shit play out. White people, we tired of letting shit play out. We have let shit play out for 400 years. And I know I wasn't a slave, but ain't nothing changed. That's what we keep trying to tell you. Ain't nothing changed. The only difference is you don't have a whip in your hand, but you still physically whipping the shit out of black America. You still oppressing black America. You still don't want to do shit, do the right thing. All we asking y'all to do. It's called racist motherfucker out. Don't support racism. Because if I saw, if I had a friend that didn't like white people, people for the color of their skin, that bitch wouldn't be my friend. She That's is the- not friends with Gariana at all. <laughs> 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 they never speak other than on this podcast. Mm. And y'all hear how I go at Gariana. To Gariana is a Gariana is a is she re, to me she read a lot of stuff that went on in history that going on in history and continue to go on in history and it pisses her the fuck off. And my biggest argument with my own child is Gariana, you can't loop all white people into this category. All people. People ain't like this shit that you see maybe a certain group amount of people do. All white people ain't the clans. Yeah. All white people ain't going to fucking harm you. You mean some people just generally and they fucking love you and they I'm not going to say they don't see color. But I mean, they realize we, we you black and I'm white, but they're never going to do anything to harm you. And that's what I try to teach my daughter. But she get into that radicalized shit and she get into that black folks mood. And, and I have to tell her, I said, you're being racist. You can't sit here and tell me all of these people are fuck. You not going to tell me that all white people in this world ain't shit. And the same way I'm going to tell you that all black men ain't thugs and all motherfucking Chinese don't eat rice. And what's the other one? <laughs> no, we're not getting involved Mexican- in this. This is all you. <laughs> and, and, and We've all temporarily <laughs> resigned from whatever you're about to say. Yeah, and all Mexicans ain't motherfucking come here illegal. But, you know, we, all we asking y'all is just show some compassion when, when you see the police are literally killing us. About a dozen. Why, if if it's not racism, why is always a white cop killing a black person? You, I have not seen black cops kill white people. I mean, I just don't see it. Like this cop that killed this kid here in Indiana. And I try to be fair. I literally try to be fair. You remember a couple weeks ago the black kid got killed? Mm -hmm. And I remember calling Dion and I said, this boy is fucking crazy. This boy is fucking crazy because I rather for the scene that kid get pulled over and something happened and it, all that shit he took through getting out the car running. And I was like, that's I, I couldn't. I was like, I can't, I can't come in on that. That shit crazy to me. A lot of that shit. You didn't have to be done on that kid part, especially with the way they treat black America with the police officer. Like we constantly have to have that talk with our kid. Put your hands on the fucking, uh, if you get pulled over, always keep your, get your ID before that motherfucker get to the wonder. Roll your wonder there. I said, I'd rather fight them in court than to be putting dirt in your motherfucking face. Yeah. 
You don't want, I mean, I pray that my kid don't ever take a police on a high speed chase and act a fool. And that's why I had no comments about that killing. Yeah. But then you putting your motherfucking knee on somebody and they telling you they can't breathe and they're calling for their mom. That just plain racist because that's a life. You hear that life coming out of that body and you literally do nothing. But you put your hands in your pocket. It said, nigga, to black America. Looking at that white man face, it said, nigga, I don't give a fuck about none of y'all, and we here to kill every one of y'all. There's so many layers to the situation as far as George Floyd. The first video came out, it was just him being choked to death, right? And the original report was that he was resisting because he wrote a bad check or it was counterfeit money, something to do the the store called and said, Hey, this guy's acting funny. He's on something and he's trying to buy cigarettes with counterfeit money. So it's that store's policy is whenever you think you got counterfeit, you automatically call the police. So they called the police on $20 worth of quote unquote stolen merchandise. So this man gets, He's sitting outside. So if you're stealing something, why would you just go? Why'd you hang like, out? Why would you hang out? Like that doesn't make any sense. And as a as a police officer, if the call you get is, you know, possible forgery, suspect is da 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 da, sitting on top of a vehicle, and then you get there and then you see him, like, does it not go through your mind that hey, maybe this guy doesn't think that he's done? what they said like does that not cross your mind yeah you know do you, when you get there are you like i'm gonna get this guy i'm i'm gonna or do you process the information that you just got like as a cop why if you if they told you a suspect was sitting outside on a truck and then you got there and he was literally sitting outside on a truck and he you can see that he doesn't have any weapons he looks like he doesn't have a care in the world how do you get there and then 20, 30 minutes later, the man's dead after he, after you already handcuffed him? Like, I've talked to a couple of cops in the past couple of days. We're like, yeah, once we handcuff you, we're, the protocol is you're supposed to sit him up on the side or stand him up. Like, those are, that's what they're talking He was one foot away from being inside of a squad car safely. They were protected. He was protected. Like, why not put him in the car? Why not leave why him? Why throw him on the ground? Why not leave him where he was? You already, they had already handcuffed him and he was just sitting on the ground. Right. Like, I, I, it blows my mind to hear people say, well, he should have just complied. That's what y'all always say. Because black we've seen video. numerous we see, videos. Where white people don't comply and they still have their lives. Not only that, but of black people absolutely complying and f- still get killed. Eric for Garner. La- for Lando Castile was yep. shot with ki- a kid in the car after he was asked for his driver's license. White people, if you don't see that this is racism, then you're a part of the Sandra problem. Sandra Bland. Yeah, Sandra you Bland. You remember the guy literally. Who was- Throwed her out the car, a woman, and fucking suffocated her to death. If you don't see that they're killing us, then you might as well be with your great grandparents in the forties and thirties. You that same motherfucking white person. You cannot turn a blind eye and not give a fuck about a whole society of people that they're trying to wipe the fuck away. And I'm gonna say this when this podcast come out, don't go in my inbox because I said what I said. I meant. And you welcome to leave. I don't give a fuck. You welcome to come back. I have a drink with you. I don't give a fuck. But you cannot. Turn. That's like saying, you know, your cousin or your daddy is raping your sister, but you never fucking tell anybody. You know what's going on in this country with black America. You know, good and goddamn well. And I ask them all the time, put yourself in those. If, if that was your child and I'm talking to white America, if that was your child, would you have wanted to see your child die that away? Is there anything in this world that your child can do? that's worth their life to the police if they're unarmed. That's what I want to ask you, white America. Is there anything that your child can do that is worth their life to the police when they're unarmed? And I would say this, I don't give a fuck what color you is. If you're unarmed and you're not harming that police officer, your life should not have been taken.
and I want to add on top of that, if if there is something that your white child can do to get taken to Burger King after they done murdered nine people, what do you say to black people when you watch them get killed for a $20 counterfeit bill? What do you say, Mr. I'm not racist, I don't see color? What do you say when you watch Dylan Roof walk into a church, murder nine black people because he's racist, and then he gets taken to Burger King? Like, how do you justify seeing that and then seeing this and still saying, I don't, I don't get what you're talking about? There's no way the system is racist. How, how do those two things coexist in your brain? Because it doesn't make any sense. You can't. Uh, not all police are bad. Okay. Well, was it a? Were they bad cops who took that boy to Burger King after he done murdered? Probably not. Or, or were they bad cops that knelt on a man's neck for nine minutes? Probably. Somebody's were. a bad cop in one of those situations. So you tell me, who's the bad cop? You tell you tell Black America that you ignore for four hundred years. They tell you they have the exact same problem systemic racism the exact same problem for 400 years and the i know system, some of you gonna come back and say oh you wasn't slave it's it not about that you, let's, no, no, let's narrow this let's narrow this down from ferguson or just eric garner yeah from i can't breathe at eric garner to i can't breathe with george floyd that's a span of less than 10 years and this is something that the conversation has taken people like me from Oh, but look at those looters to now we've got to talk about this. I can't avoid the uncomfortable conversations. Just in the last five years, what have you done? Let's just take it to the the multiple instances in the last five years alone where we're having the same conversation over and over and over. And then every time there's something, there's always some but, right? And this is goes back to what you talked about on an episode that we cut out. People asked us to cut out. Dion talking about uncomfortable conversations. It's on Miss Pat's YouTube. But they're looting. But he walked through a construction site. But there was, there's always a but. And it's the but that people will use to justify not having the uncomfortable conversation. Of racism. Of racism. Because, yes, there's very few people who actually support the looting. But why is the looting taking place? Why is the looting? Attention. Why does the looting always take place? It's because people are saying the same thing over and over and over, and nobody's listening. I will say that for my feed, the Aubrey situation and the George Floyd situation, there's almost no but. Like this is, I have seen it over the last three years, two years especially, go from most of my white feed saying but, but, but to now. No more. Stop. That's enough. Like, there's always going to be the buts, right? But I'm I'm seeing the conversation change because I think more people are realizing my experience is different than your experience, and I need to understand what you're explaining. Just because, like, it, what we've what I've learned over the course of this podcast, and what I've learned from other black friends is just life is different for me, and it. I need to first and foremost, just understand that and listen. And I think more people are listening and trying to understand, and that was is it hopefully Was hard for you changing. at first? It was uncomfortable. Let's, let's take a break and come right back. Okay. Is there something interfering with your happiness, baby, or preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with a licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. And listen, it's not a damn crisis hotline, okay? It's a professional counseling done securely online. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. All you got to do is log in anytime and send that counselor a message. They're going to jump their ass up out of bed or stop what they're doing, and they're going to come talk to you. It's going to be quick. You can get timely and thoughtful response, plus you can schedule weekly videos or phone sessions, so you won't even have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as a traditional therapist. No more waiting room. They're here for you. Any time of day. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they can make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. So if you got a counselor and you don't like it, you can change it. 
is more affordable than traditional online counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp, that's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, wants you to start living a happier life today. So I need you, while you're sitting in front of your computer, to visit the website and read their testimonies that are posted daily. Visit BetterHelp.com, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash pat down. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P, and join the over 800,000 people talking about taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Special offer for my podcast listeners, 10% off your first month. You can't beat that. BetterHelp will match you up with the right person that can help you get through whatever you need to get through. Take your ass on over there to BetterHelp.com slash the pat down and get these 10%. As folks adapt to the changing world, we're going to be buying more stuff online than ever before. If you're an economist seller or you're ready to meet the demands of our new delivery culture, be ready with ShipStation. When you're selling online, getting lots of orders out fast can be tough. Because I sell a lot of my products online, from my books to my t-shirts to my pop socket. And ever since I discovered ShipStation, it has made my life easier. How do you keep track of who gets what? What shipping carrier would you use? Are you getting the best rates? ShipStation take care of all of that for you. That's why you need ShipStation. Just a few clicks and you'll be managing your orders printing out labels, and getting your products to happy customers on time, ShipStation makes this easier. ShipStation helps online sellers get any size order out quickly, save money on shipping costs, and keep your customers happy. Because when it's all over, it comes down to your customers being happy. And customers will tell you when they don't receive their products. I'm I'm here to tell you, my customer will complain in a minute. No matter where you're selling, Is it Amazon? Is it Etsy? Is it Facebook? It doesn't matter. ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface, making them really easy to manage from any device, even your dang cell phone. ShipStation work with all major carriers, including UPS, FedEx, and even Amazon Fulfillment. So you can compare and choose the best shipping solution for you and your customer. They even offer big discounts on shipping costs. Now, any business can access the same postage discount that they usually reserve for large Fortune 5 companies. They will give it to small businesses like me and you. You already know you're getting the best deal. And can I just say this? Do you ship international, Canada, China, Australia? I ship to all of these places. ShipStation do too. They will help you get your product almost anywhere in the world. No wonder ShipStation is the number one choice for online seller like me and you. And right now, my Pat Down listeners can get ShipStation for free for 60 days when you offer cold Pat Down. Make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of delivery culture. Get started at ShipStation.com today. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Pat Down, P-A-T-D-O-W-N. Let me say that again. Click on the microphone at the top of your homepage and type in Pat Down, P-A-T-D-O-W-N. That's ShipStation.com. Then enter my podcast code Pat Down, P-A-T-D-O-W-N, because ShipStation.com makes ship happens. All right, we're back from the break. The question was, what, what, did, what did you ask him, Dion? Was it hard for him to listen it was not hard for me to listen because I'd already started that process. Like I, I do a libertarian podcast. Like I'm like, I'm all in on like what I would say to conservatives and libertarians and people who are generally of the right. Police officers are the vanguard of the state. They are the first and foremost protectors of rights. And they're not protectors of rights of the people who aren't committing crimes. They're supposed to protect the rights of the person in their custody. And so if you proclaim right to life every five seconds about aborted fetuses, then you have to look at George Floyd and go, this person deserved the right to life. That man murdered him and stole his right to life. He did not protect his rights. And so, like, so when I got here, what I was uncomfortable with 
was the part the personal vulnerability of exposing that I didn't totally know what I was talking about. I didn't know how you would react. I didn't know how Miss Pat would react if I had questions or if I made a point that I didn't fully understand. Mm-hmm. What was uncomfortable for me was not having experience having that conversation. And what you guys have been great at doing is helping me along with that. And I think that's what a lot of people, they avoid that personal vulnerability because they don't know how to have the conversation. And what I hope that people have learned from this is to hear the conversations that we've had, hear that growth, and identify whether they're white or black or whatever. Because Dion had to give a little, Dion had to be uncomfortable, Dion had to be personally vulnerable, and so did I. You know, and we didn't do great at it in the beginning, but now I think we understand each we understand each other. And so we can talk about things like Medicare for all. And I know Dion's coming from a place of good faith and he and I have the same values. We just have different paths to get to the same end goal, you know. And so what what bothers me is that people choose to stay divided because a division is an intentional barrier that we create to not have to deal with something. So we choose to stay divided, or we let politicians keep us divided, or the media keep dividing us, instead of talking about those differences that we have and being uncomfortable in that conversation. And that's what I would encourage people to just start having those conversations, start trying to understand other people's experiences, because diversity has added tremendously to my life, and it does for everybody that in embraces diversity and that's that's one thing i've always tell people you know even with the fan base that i have if you would just have those conversations we can grow as a nation we can grow as a people we can grow as human beings the problem is is that you sit behind your computer and you literally think every nigga that's thrown to the ground is a thug they stole something their life ain't worth shit but you because you know your comfortable ass is never going to be put in that situation and i always go to your kids because people no matter what most people in this world love the shit out of their kids and i said it early and i said again when next time you see a nigga with his life being choked out of take that black face off and put my motherfucking cody there and see if you got that same put yourself feeling. in it yeah would you but, want to be treated like that if you were in custody what are, they let you know? i would never that would never happen to me because i would just do what the police say no right no well i i, I would reached, just do what the police say and they would never do that to me yeah because you've got skin color protection i was in greenwood i got pulled over it's a white community south of indianapolis about a year ago i reached for my registration he pulled back and drew his weapon and told me to stop and the key to all of this is understanding that other people than you are deserving of dignity, respect, they have worth, and what is happening with police and what is happening with most bureaucracies and what is happening when we let ourselves get divided is you stop seeing that person as a human being. Those four cops didn't see George Floyd as a person. They don't think of him as a human being. They see a criminal. And cops, because they're, they have no time for community policing, they're too busy enforcing too many laws, they're too busy enforcing too much bullshit, there's diminishing resources, all of a sudden the mentality has gone from serve and protect to everybody's a fucking criminal that's out to get me. And so they treat everybody... It's been like that. And so, well, well then... How do we change it? That's, I think, what the next you, step is. You stop is. hiring racist cops. You stop allowing... How you change this shit from cops killing black people? You stop allowing fucking police officers to get... That police officer who killed George was already killed somebody before. Yeah. Already been in trouble. Like, he got a rap cheat like me when I forged check and sold motherfucking dope. So, why is it that you keep somebody like this on your force? If you go in your refrigerator and you got to crack eggs with all your eggs, what are you going to do with it? Chris, you're going to throw that fucking crack egg out because it ain't no more fucking good, right. especially if it's leaking. This nigga was leaking and he should have been gone. And all these motherfuckers protect him because it's the blue fucking shield and whatever the fuck they go by when you're a police officer. That's what happened. Every police officer ever killed a nigga had a rap sheet like he was a goddamn criminal. Ain't no Christian motherfucking good old boy with no clean rap sheet out here killing nobody. I know cops that ain't never treated nobody like that. I know I'm here in Plainfield. 
So you're not going to tell. The problem is, is that they don't get rid of these motherfuckers when they kill the first nigga. That nigga that ran down there in Cleveland and shot that little 12-year-old boy, he been crazy. He should have been gone. He should have never been high. But when you're white, you're right. So these motherfuckers, police department, they don't give a fuck about who they hire. They keep protecting the ones who's fucking bad. Part, part of that, and let me, sorry to interrupt, Dion. Like the police unions here in, here in town, if you got the police unions, because when I worked in politics, the FOP endorsement was huge. Because if you get the FOP endorsement, you basically win your race. And so you bend over backwards to get their endorsement if you're a first-time candidate. You bend over backwards if they're, you're an incumbent. It's basically in Indianapolis the deciding factor of who gets on the council, who becomes mayor, who becomes whatever. That perpetuates bad policy. That perpetuates the keeping of bad cops. What? The bad guys don't police themselves? No. 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 The system protects itself. And when you... What is the system? You just said it. Patriots... It's, 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 it's a cash game. Right. I need the money. The only way I'm going to get the money is if I kiss the ass of a motherfucker who's not going to police himself. Right. Right? So whose job is it to police the police? It's our job. Yep. Who's the majority in this country? White people. White people. Y'all not doing your job. Y'all are not policing the police. You have heard about police brutality for a very long time. Hey, I'm born in the 70s. And uh, the way they, before before I was born, they was putting dogs and water holes on. Okay, so we've all seen that picture of those Southern cops beating niggas up to try and vote. We've mm-hmm. all heard, of, we've all heard that. And it, it, it literally took TV to make people go, oh, I don't think I like that. Yeah. Okay, and now we're seeing it. Over and over and over and over again. Killing us. Killing so, us. They literally you killing You heard us. about the problem. What What's taking you so long to be like, this isn't right? You keep saying, I don't know what to do. Get off your ass. Get off your ass. You've heard the problem. Get off your ass and investigate the issue. You, everybody's heard cops are bad. They're killing people for no reason. Everybody's heard that. So when you hear that and you say, well, I don't know what to do, fucking research the shit. Everybody carries infinite knowledge in their hand eight hours a day. We're attached to our phones constantly. You, all you have to type in is police racism. And there's literally thousands of pages that show up where you can read episode after episode after episode of police doing fucked up shit because of skin color and you have the power to say something and do something and save your neighbor how do you call yourself american and you let america do this america's doing it to you america is every shit thing that bad people do in this country reflects on all of us so when you say what about chicago chicago is us chicago is us it's not black people it's us it's us it's all of us. So we, if all you care about is Chicago and you don't care about the white kids doing overdosing on heroin, that's you shooting too. up school. You don't you need, need you need to have as much energy for the heroin epidemic as you did for that conversation about Chicago. If you want to do what about isms till you're blue in the face, you will lose because your history is littered with shit that you aren't going to be proud of. That you let happen, you didn't do anything to check it until we fucking rioted. And when he say you, he's not talking about individuals, you, he's talking about white Collective. race as a whole. As a whole. Oh, no, fuck that. I think it's you, the listener. And I'm, I'm going to back him up on this. It comes down to, we, we'd love to distract ourselves with sports or entertainment or various bullshit in this country. And it comes down to us not wanting to pay attention to the issues because it's exhausting. It's tiring. But that's part of being in a free society. And this is a free society. And you make decisions who you send to your, your town council, your state house, your election. And if you are buying into things like patriotism are used to keep these bad ideas going. You're not a real American if you don't support the troops. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of Yemenis are dead. You're not a real American if you don't support the cops. Not all cops are bad. And then a bunch of black people are killed by cops. And then if you just keep buying into these ideas that keep 
the system perpetuated, it's on you, the listener, the individual. And if you're not voting, if you're not participating in the system, it's on you. It's choosing to be ignorant about the issues and not wanting to talk about the issues. Oh, I there's, hear this. There's, I hear, there, hold on. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I hear this a lot, too. Well, white, pe- white cops kill white people. Mike, they, they do. They, be fucking mad about it. Yeah. Be fucking... Don't let that... How is that okay with you? Yeah. As an argument to white cops killing black people. How does that even make sense? There are two books that I would recommend to people. They're both on audiobooks, too. Because to that point, there is there are more white people killed by cops in this country because there's more of us. But the rate, the percentage of people killed by cops is double for black people. Once you get into the statistics of the criminal justice system, you start to see what Dion is talking about. And there's a book called The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander that's a great detailed analysis, fact-based analysis of it. Then there's another book called Rise of the Warrior Cop by Radley Balco. And it talks about the change in policing from Barney Fife to what we have now. So in the 70s, they passed a law that started sending military equipment to police. When you see the tank or the MRAP showing up to a bar in Las Vegas Mm -hmm. because these people are not socially distancing, it's a message. When you show up to your county fair and they've got a tank in the middle of the fairgrounds, it's a message. And it's, we're in charge and you're not and don't challenge our authority. Donald Trump's tweeting out, if you challenge my authority, I'm going to send in the military on you. It's the system is constantly trying to condition you that they're in charge and you're not and you can't change it. But the reality is you absolutely can because politicians are spineless little weasels and they do exactly what their public wants. And so if enough people start speaking up about policing issues, guess what goes away? The fucking tank, Mm -hmm. the deaths of black people, the drug laws will go away. It, it means you being informed and talking about it and risking having friends on your Facebook call you a liberal if you're a conservative. Guess what? If you talk about issues of race and you're white and you're a conservative or a libertarian, it's not going to make you a big government AOC liberal if you start seeing black people as your neighbor, as people who are worth protecting. It's not going to make you the – if you are a Trump supporter – and you start talking about these issues, it doesn't mean that you don't, it doesn't mean that you're like liberal or conservative or racist or all What's these collectivist terms can we talk are used to keep people second? in their place. Can we talk about, what, what are you conserving if you're not willing to stand up for these black lives and these white lives that are being snuffed out by police and drugs? I'll an- what I'll what are you conserving? The, the point of what a conservative was is that a conservative was meant to protect individual rights. It was meant to preserve a system of individuals being able to flourish. What conservatism has become is patriotism. It's that the state is always right as long as my team is in control. When did that happen? The shift, it's completely gone away under Trump. But it has slowly been eroding since the 50s. So... (laughs) That's 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 pretty much when the uh, the uh, the Dixie the Dixie yes yeah, right you're right racism the fifties so you're conserving racism right that's all you're doing if you say you're conservative you're conserving the old ways of being racist of not caring right that's you want to put like what are the conservative policies. The businesses pollute. They're looking to frack more. They want to drill offshore more. They want to be able to put their shitty fucking uh, pollutants in your clean water. That's all their policy. So when you say I'm a conservative, I'm a fiscal conservative, that just means you want to make more money and shit on poor people. That's all you're doing. I mean, shitting you, on poor people. You, you don't give a fuck about people. Is I, it, because I, I just it, don't. It tell I you, think, it tell on, you how people you do not. No, it tell on. you how much people, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, since we've been honest and we damn near family, it's white people. How how when when we down, we here on quarantine and lockdown, and it's not all of you, but the majority of you was uh, uh, everybody screaming, what was everybody screaming? Damn, I forgot the fuck I was gonna say. Opening, opening up the um, 
the restaurants we want to go back yeah to, we want to go back to work and we what about the economy do the economy mean any and, and chris we talked about this economy mm-hmm. shit before it's all about the economy economy money 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 gonna be here when we all dead and gone Money going to literally be here when we all dead and gone. Bills are, are going to always be here. People die every day and leave bills behind. That's just life. But I literally all you heard was people screaming and protesting about open up the economy. They didn't give a fuck about lives. So, you know, if they don't give a fuck about their lives, they was out there protesting with their kids with no masks on. And I was remember sitting there calling Dion. I said, if they don't give a fuck about their own lives and they ready to go back to doing whatever the fuck they want to do, they truly don't give a fuck about no police officer killing nobody that look like me. I just don't under I don't understand it. Like I I do, when you I don't understand money how is what we make go, it to be. Money is what we we own money. We yeah. created it. It is what the fuck we say it is. We've how, gone we've gone from being effective at trying to win over people who aren't on of the who are of the conservative mindset to borderline insulting and i'm, not, and I'm cautioning you both because I'm not, you're not cautioning what, how me. am i insulting because I'm not, because by saying the people the, the policy are, of a conservative is about money right that's the policy mm-hmm. it depends on the conservative what? like it depends on it depends on what's what the difference between the, uh fucking uh mitch mcconnell and lindsey graham what's the difference in those what's instances, no, but what's the difference between? All right, they have, they, that's the thing about conservatives. Y'all don't care who's on your side as long as they're on your side. You don't care. That's my point. You don't care. You you just is he is he a red Republican? Then fine. Yeah, I, it's everybody gets in the group if whether they're good, they're bad, and you don't check them. So when you say I don't like lib- liberals, what am I liberal about? Rights for everybody. That we don't pollute the fucking ocean. That we don't make our water shit. That we don't take advantage of disenfranchised people. That's what I'm liberal about. That I'm we- liberal about people being allowed to live the life they want to live. Who cares if you're gay and you want to get married? Who cares? That's none of our fucking business. But your fucking Jesus told you it's wrong? Well, let him take care of it. If you got faith in that motherfucker, he don't need your help. What are you talking about? And I don't mean you, but like, what are yeah, you talking about? Because I agree with everything you just like, said. It's <laughs> stupid. It's dumb. You're a libtard because you want people to just have socialism and free health care. Yeah, I do. Because it's a good thing that people are healthy, that they can work. But people, that, but people who says that probably have health care. And people who like to poll people down in Mississippi who talk that shit and say they're Republican, they don't read and really know what the fuck is going on. Because when they when they pass bills for poll people, they get benefit by it. You seen those things where people go in and, and do fucking interviews with them people. I think I should get Obamacare. I think I should get insurance. But I'm a Republican. Well, then why you vote against your own self? I mean, I don't understand it. If you poor and you need it. I mean, I, honestly, I see Republicans as rich people. That's what I see. They, I see Republicans. Their that, policy that, is for rich the people. Super, the super wealthy are all Democrats. I mean, people like Michael Bloomberg went from Republican to Democrat because because he, he, the, because because, he didn't want to be racist. No, uh, be, no. That top it, class that go to show. Look at Congress. No, it's look money. Congress is money too. Is mo- but look at Congress. Congress is all white. I mean, why can't let me say this? Congress for the Republicans is all white. All white men, all white men and white women who are being told what the fuck to do. You get on Republican side and the Democratic side is all different kinds of people. And when you that rich like Bloomberg, that you don't give a fuck. You give you a fuck about five hundred million dollars to be told that we don't fucking like you. you. Yes. So when you get when you get that rich, you ain't really worried about the Democratic Party. You just to me personally, you come over there not to be so racist. The motherfucker who I believe is a Democrat, people like Will Smith, who was black and poor and know what the fuck it is. If I ever get rich, I'm going to always vote Democrat because I ain't going to never forget where the fuck I come from. I never vote that away. I don't give a fuck because you know why? Money don't mean shit to me. I give a fuck if you if you insure. I give a fuck if you healthy. I give a fuck if you happy. I don't give a fuck about no money. Because let me tell you something. Sitting here talking to y'all two every week, is, you can't put the value on how much I enjoy y'all coming to my house talking to me. I don't give a fuck about no money. 
Because if I believe that there's a higher power and I'm always going to be taken care of, I ain't been through shit to get to shit. I've always been taken care of. It's greed in this country. That's what make people not give a fuck about each other. That's why the Republican Party are a bunch of old ass white thieving motherfuckers. Now, don't get me wrong. Democrats be stealing, too. But at least they try to give back. These motherfuckers want to take every program out there from you. Listen to this bullshit. What, look at this shit they about to do to the school system. They talking about getting rid of the post office. That's how greedy they any way that they can get rid of a program so their friends can own that program. Greedy. Because in the end, if there's a heaven or hell, it's going to be full of old ass white men. That's what it's going to be full of. It's all about money. They don't give a fuck about us. And I say this shit all the time. It's all about, I don't want to be sitting at you next to the doctor's office. I don't want you living in my fucking community. That's what it is. I don't want to be uncomfortable. Did you see the in Pennsylvania, the state house, they hid the COVID, the positive COVID-19 test? Yeah. Yeah, like, they hid it. Like, wh- why? To not make the president look bad. Like, of course, it's... I- it's- tribalism so, like yeah. it's on on all sides it's about looking a certain way it's like we we weirdly have to make mask wearing well, I a say culture it's, it war. used okay. to be on one side now it's just look the democrat is out to expose trump as much as possible so they're just giving away all the motherfucking information literally the people if that you don't trump think there's I- tribalism on the left then why did you get yelled at by garyana because you are expressing an opinion that is no longer fashionable within your own circles Every single group of people, it doesn't, and it happens in even little circles like libertarian circles. I'm constantly getting shit on, like it's coming out and saying there's systemic racism. I have to push is back on that because Joe Biden's not a fucking liberal. He's not. It's it, he's not. Don't believe me. He's not. Okay. And nobody's saying Joe Biden is Jesus. Like I said, I take my racism in dope. We know the laws that Joe Biden has passed. We know how Joe Biden has hurt the community. And one thing about the black community, we some forgiving motherfuckers. That, you know what I'm saying? That that's the problem that we have. White folks don't know, don't have to forgive, or you don't, or you don't forget. I don't fucking know. But you can literally shit on the black community. Look at these motherfuckers. This white boy walked in the church. I don't and understand. Shot. I don't understand saying this guy's been part of the problem for 40 years. Let's give him another. Other chance how are you voting in because your when you're black you have to choose who you want shitting on you <laughs> that's why you don't understand chris look it's, down at you always fucking sucked it's always sucked even for the best of us Lit, chris. they still call you a nigger Chris, they still call you a no nigger. matter how much money you got. It don't matter. It don't matter. We will always be niggles to white people. You know, I was standing in my driveway and I called you after this. I was literally standing in my driveway in this suburban white neighborhood. And and the, the reason why I'm telling you this, because it's what you said to me at the end that kind of made my eyebrow go up. So I'm standing at my driveway this week and it was Memorial Day. And on Monday, my trash man come on Wednesday. So I'm putting my trash out on Tuesday. And this white lady decided to walk in my yard and say, why are you putting your trash out? The trash man ain't coming today. Did you not read the website? And I looked at this bitch in my yard and I said, mind your motherfucking business, bitch. Everybody trash is out. Did you knock on they door? Get the fuck out my yard, white bitch. And so I called you, Chris, and I told you what happened. And you was like, uh, well, um... Uh, I got. I was talking about white people not minding they fucking business. And you was like, black people don't do that. Nigga, ain't no nigga coming in your yard and ask you why the fuck you ain't put your motherfucking trash out. That nigga was like, oh shit, I need to put my trash out. That was me not understanding. Like, I know, I know, yeah. I, I know. That was. I'm not. I'm, I wasn't getting mad at you, but it made me go like, damn, me had to ask that. Yeah, because I don't know. I don't have no idea what your experience like. The first time I read your book was the first experience that I was like, holy shit, this is like, it was my first experience with poverty. Yeah. Like, but, Rabbit is, I read it in two hours because I just was like, what? Yeah. And so when, when you said that to me, my eyebrow went up like, damn, we are different. For this lady to be bold enough to walk up in my driveway and ask me why was I putting that It's my partly face. being a man, too. People don't... It, that bitch you, looked it, like look, a man, but uh, she was but, a woman. So the guy, yeah, the guy in Central Park, right? So he posted what he said to her before that he started rolling video. And basically the exchange was, you know, you can't, he basically got in her shit and said, you can't have your dog running around here. Take her out there. 
and she said, I don't want to do that. So he said, I'm, well, I'll take care of this then. Come, like, started calling her dog and, like, basically said, like, I'm going to do with your dog whatever I want. And he had treats in his pocket. Well, she didn't know that. She pulls out the treats. She's like, I'm going to call the police. And this was clearly, like, a racist statement. Like, she's intimidating him by saying, I'm going to call them and tell a black man's fucking with me. But, like, it, it, it's it's one of those situations like he i forgot what my point was but basically he was he was not minding his business. he was not minding his business he was he was minding no, his he business. wasn't he was in a place where dogs are not allowed to be off leash she was doing she was breaking the law right yep. okay and we get the police so when i say hey stop breaking day. the law when you're in a place where you're not supposed to be breaking the law but, i, I but had then the it, nerve to ask you but then he, then he basically came across as threatening yeah, to her by his own I, words. When, when I'm living my life and you're fucking with me because you're a dick? Would he have done that if it was you or me? Yeah. Yes. No, I don't, I don't agree. You, yes, he would You think he wanted to talk yeah. to that lady? First of all. You think he wanted to talk to anybody? The nigga was out there looking for birds. <laughs> first of all. The last thing he wanted to do is be talking to people. And first of all, niggas don't even bird watch, which I was fucking. I told you I thought he had an acorn and the mouth of teeth was so brown. That's what I, that's where the acorn came from. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't fucking I you rarely see nigga bird watching. So the last thing he wanna do is watch the dog. That's tap why habitat. he had the treats on him in the first place, because motherfuckers don't follow the law. They ruined his life. He's trying to fucking bird watch and he gotta deal with y'all bullshit. Don't nobody wanna do that. Why the fuck? That's what I'm talking about. Like you you do unnecessary shit. You had the fucking leash in your hand, lady. Just put it on your dog and get the fuck out the park. Because And if, now if, you wanna call the police? And so if And ruin your life? He's so mad about the dog. Like, <laughs> I'm so upset with her unnecessary. It's, it was Calm just down, so Dion. You skinny, boy. Ain't nobody about to give you no CPR in this motherfucker, uh, no GPS or whatever. Not kidding. Unnecessary about it. shit. Don't piss y'all off like that. Like, no. It was so. Uh, <laughs> no. She literally choked the dog instead of just putting him on Like, here's my thing. I, like, like, why? I read so much news. That, like, I get mad about George Floyd and I save my shit for that. But if I got mad about every dumb ass that I read about, I'm Your just dick like, would disappear. I would just be, I would, I would have hypertension Your all the time. Your dick would disappear. It'd go inside. I just can't have Your that. Your dick would disappear. I've been dealing you with it. You have a fat pussy. So Dion, she called me the other day, that same conversation, and she goes, What you doing? I go, Oh, you're just hanging out. Jack and your dick. <laughs> 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 See, listen to her. <laughs> She just uh, the whole room erupted with laughter. We gotta do better, y'all. We gotta do better as people. You know, we gotta we you, 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 you we you, we gotta do better as people. We can't say shit like when when police officers kill black people and well, if only you comply, then I don't give. Most of the people that get picked, killed by the police do comply and they still fucking get killed. They, you know, you get anyway. yeah. You cannot you cannot look at. It's just a nigga gone. You got to look at it's a life that we're never going to get back. Dion touched on it. And it's what I said, drop the butts, right? Like, and so Taylor Branch has this three-part series about the civil rights movement that's really good. And he basically talks about how in there, to get things to change, Martin Luther King and the... and. The uh, and SNCC and everybody had to go and get white people, and that's part of why television coverage was so important. Because once you get the in group, and this is why I'm saying this to well, you, the white like, people uh, lazy now. We y- can't you, get them to Mars. You, I don't think that's true. I think people are more motivated now to fix these problems than they've been in we at least a, in my lifetime. You, you know, well, and I, I'm and so ahead. let me finish this. Go ahead. So there's in groups and out groups in put terms of up. huh? Put your nipples up. Sorry, my nipples are really hard. I love, to, I love talking about racial justice. It gets me going. I'm like a white Dion here. Uh, so I'm in the in group of white people. Miss Pat and Dion are on the out group. There's certain in groups, and you, if Donald Trump in the Republican in group is criticized by Nancy Pelosi in the Democratic out group, he doesn't listen to it. It's expected, and so in in people just expect criticism from an out group. But once they start hearing criticism from their in-group, that's when they start paying attention. If you're a Republican, you have to check Donald Trump. If you're a Democrat, you have to check Joe Biden. If you're white, you have to check white people. You have to start talking about these things because you have credibility with your circle. If Dion and Miss Pack start coming and talking to my white libertarian friends, it's not as impactful as me going, hey, I'm one of you. I understand your concerns. I feel what you're talking about. Let me tell you what I believe. And... 
you know, same if I walked into a, a black Democratic, if I walked into the Black Panthers meeting, do you think that I'd have credibility? No, because I'm not in that in group. Like, so the people they that listen, pe- I'm sure they would. You will probably have credibility. That's why white people can, uh, that's why y'all can come and dance. And, and uh, like white comedians can go to a black room and do comedy and get more time than a black person. They'll boo the shit out of the black because person. I, but at the end of the day, I don't, I will never understand your experiences as Americans. Yes, you will. Put on my wig and paint yourself black. Get that ass whooped, Chris. Yeah, I am not. <laughs> if you don't want me on this podcast anymore, you just have to say it. You don't have to try and get me killed. <laughs> so if you have to look at your friends and family and say, I'm on the in group of these people, and I need to find a way to start talking about this stuff and make people understand that's part of what we're doing here is we're coming at multiple in groups and saying... Here's these different ex- life experiences, and this is a great place to start because humor's disarming. Share the podcast, you know, like share this one. So I've gotten a lot of white people who've asked me, "What do I do? Right? What? Wh- how can I help?" And I'm like, "You're coming to me, asking me how to help me solve my problem." Like. If I knew that, wouldn't I just do it myself? <laughs> like, what what do I need you for if I'm going to give you the information that's going to save me and then not do it? Like, I don't know how you can help me. You need to know how you can help you. Yeah. Like, you have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to, if you want to be an ally, get scars. Because if you don't have any scars, you're not an ally. You're a bystander. Yeah. You're Switzerland. You're watching the war. You're counting the money, but you ain't picked a side. So if you're really interested in being an ally to change this country, finally, get Bring more white people to my comedy show. <laughs> you gotta, when you ask a question, what about Chicago? Research why Chicago is like Chicago. Yeah. There's a reason behind it. Everything. Bring more white people. It comes down to public policy. There's public policy behind all this. Educate yourself. And that's where really where if you want to help, start researching. Start reading. The more you read, the better your life will be. Teach your white babies about black history. Yeah. Teach your kids that this this country ain't no motherfucking peaches and cream or American pie. Tell them the real history. And then see how much your eyes, I mean, read, even if you don't teach your kid, you go out and learn the history of this country. And don't ask nobody to get over shit because ain't, ain't nothing changed, y'all. Literally nothing have changed. And it's not going to. When, not when you keep hiding behind the bullshit. And I, I, I was thinking today, I said, well, damn. I, I wonder if, if, if many, I, I got almost 100,000 people following me on um. Well, they probably, I lost a lot of them, too, for posting this shit. Here's what I'd say. Hold the, on, the nigga, let me th- finish. Hold on, nigga. Hold on. Hold on. I'm asserting okay. white privilege. Okay. Th- this- um, what? Uh, you don't make me forget the fuck I about to say, and I got gas. Shut got, the fuck up. You had 100,000 followers. Yeah. And you pissed them off. Yeah, I pissed a lot of them off. They left like a motherfucker. Come on back when you're ready. I'm here for you. But, um... I don't forget what the fuck I was going to say because you fucking interrupt me. Just like a white man stealing your thoughts. <laughs> I've, I've lost, trust me, I'm, I've lost uh, 300 followers on one page. Like, it's it, talking about the stuff this week. Like, And those people, bye. Like, they're not ready to have the conversation. They don't want to have the conversation. I'm here for the people that want to listen. I'm here for the yeah. people that want to engage. And that's one thing that I would say to people is... It's what the conversation we had with Gary on it. To the people that are savable, are salvageable, interact with them, engage with them. The people that are, there's always going to be stubborn assholes who are going to be racist. That You're not going to change them. Quit wasting your time with those people. But realize that sometimes conversing out with them. those people. Out them. Out them. Out them. If you, I had a friend the other day. He's like, oh, I got some friends with racist tendencies. I was like. The only people who have racist tendencies are racist. I go, stop sugarcoating their bullshit. Stop that. Stop coddling their ignorance. Confront them. That's like, yo, here's the line. Which side of it are you on? If you're not on the right side of it, I don't fuck with you anymore. If, yeah. if, they've, exp- if they've expressed to you that they have no interest in changing who they are as people and their thought process, if they're not even curious to know why shit is going down the way it's going down, then... Don't waste your energy on them. But yeah. if you have if you have friends that are curious, 
Hit my inbox up. I will gladly start your path. I'm not going to hold your hand and I ain't going to sugarcoat it. So be careful what you ask me in my inbox. But I will help you. It's not impossible. There's literally you got all the information. you need. Even if you want to have a conversation about race and, you know, like you want to know something, you want to just have that conversation with a black person that you never had. Dion is here for you. I'll talk to you. Do not write me because I ain't got time to be that correct spelling this shit. You know, you can always call me on Facebook or if you get too serious, I pick up the phone and call your motherfucking ass. But I mean, the whole point of us doing this podcast is to make you guys realize we black America just want to be treated like a real Americans. That's all we asking. We're tired of being gunned down by police officers. Gunned down. I just saw a, 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 I just saw a thing where a guy was delivering food. I think you sent me that. He did. Uh, somebody sent it to me. He was delivering food. Um, uh, Grub Hub, and a man came out with a shotgun and drew it on. He's like, "Nigga, I am delivering food in these apartments." Another incident. Well, uh, th- these these uh, this guy was. I don't know, he was driving. It was like a little fender bumper. He gets out and the white man shoot him and called self-defense. Now, they locked his ass up. I mean, why the fuck are y'all so scared of us? I don't understand. We're not gorillas. Is it gorillas? That'll work. We're not gorillas. We're not monkeys. Go, go, gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, y'all. Act- it's Dion sent a video and like, so this lady got freaked out by a black couple walking and he had a broomstick. And was swinging it around. And she confronted them, like, scared. And they did a magnificent job. And Dion, hopefully you'll post that in the Facebook group. But they did a magnificent job of patiently walking. They spent 10 minutes on this woman going, this is why it's wrong for you to have this reaction. We're not here to hurt you. And I guarantee that woman walked away going, yeah, that's... I." I, I, I was racist. <laughs> like, I because mean, their reaction was so loving I was and hoping kind. she put a camera on her, but she never did. No, she, she was respectful of the woman that was offensive to her in that way. She didn't put the camera on her because she was trying to Not walk her, her through. Life. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and it, you know, nice like, to me. <clears throat> yeah, like the lady who I, I said that came in my this. driveway. You know, the lady who came in yeah. my driveway and literally told me, why the fuck am I putting out my trash? Yeah. I'm like, bitch, I pay. We, we we don't have to live in your, to, to make you comfortable. That's not our responsibility. I don't fuck with nobody. I put my trash out. I go in the house. I'm hardly in this motherfucker. This is the most I've been in this house since I bought this goddamn house. Bitch, everybody know me in this community. Why the fuck are you worried about me? Yeah. I just, bitch, and then you live in, I hate when they fuck with me. My, my community divided into, it'd be like poor, middle class, and then rich. And I live right there in the middle class section, I call it. Mm. So, bitch, if you live in the cheaper houses up front, why are you fucking with me? Why are you fucking with me, bitch? Because she's jealous that you're living in the middle class section and she's the lower class section. I'm like, bitch, you up there with your shingles falling off. Leave me the fuck alone. Crazy ass bitch. She's done recon on this lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, oh, well, the it was bottom, her doing the drive. My white neighbor told her he lived over there and what a big, big house is at down there. And one day, this white lady, he he was riding his like dirt bike. He got some nice ass dirt bike. I don't know the man, but all the land was was no houses built. And so we got a Facebook page here. And they was like, I am tired of people tearing up the dirt. And so he she decided to call this one man out. And he said, Look here, bitch. Don't you live in the cheap houses? Don't come back here fucking with us. And I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) When he drugged that bitch and said, cunt, I was screaming. Sometimes (laughs) I go on my page just to see the pissed off white men cuss white women out. My next door neighbor don't play. Like, he was doing a project one day. She's like, that look like a a really big project. He said, keep it moving, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) This pandemic, and it started when Trump got elected. Like, all of a sudden, white men had a little bit more attitude, and like, then now, with the pandemic, everybody's just in everybody's shit about everything, and it's just miserable. It's like, can we all just... Get along. Listen, wearing a mask is kind and it's scientific oh i gotta to tell you about the mask and it's like but if you don't want to wear it or you want to wear it who gives a fuck no, fuck that shit you're right? talking about so i'm in, just I'm in leave each other alone i'm in lowe's God right damn so I'm that's in what lows. pisses me off did i tell y'all i was in lowe's right and uh, i go in there and got my i got my i ain't got on a wig i got my hat. hat no i just had on a hat 
Fuck you, Dion. I just God, I forgot head. about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm standing there talking to one of the guys who worked there, and this other white man just looking at me. Did I tell y'all this? He's just no. looking at me. So I said, I said, why you keep looking at me like that? I'm, I'm cute to you. <laughs> and and I, I shocked him for saying that. And so uh, he asked for some cedar wood. And I said, well, the guy's like, we don't have any cedar. Our truck didn't come in. I said, but I was just at Menards. It's, a, it's a, like a Home Depot here in Indiana. And I said, they got it. He said, I refuse to wear a mask. I'm not going in Menards. Because Menards literally make you wear a mask yeah. or buy a mask. So I said, I said, so you don't think the coronavirus is real? I'm, I've been walking around here. Four weeks without a mask. I said, well, sir, let me tell you something. I almost killed my son. And I said, I'm, a t- I'm here to tell you. The coronavirus is like a hot dick with an STD at the tip. <laughs> Do you want a hot dick in your ass, sir? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> He looked at me and was like, the black boy who was helping us was crying. Uh, I said, do you like hot dicks? <laughs> well, how about this? Do you like pussy on fire? Because that's what the coronavirus is, is, pussy on fire. <laughs> I said, you ever had gonorrhea on your white dick before? <laughs> 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 you should have seen him getting the fuck away from me. He was like, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going, it ain't real. It is too fucking real, you son of a bitch. And I was just fucking with it. So this is why Ms. Pat's family has been infamous and famous in, <laughs> in my hometown for the last decade, at least. <laughs> I would hear stories about Gariana in school, and I'm like, they're doing what? <laughs> like, so they're like, this whole comedian's family, they're just a terror. They're t- she, this girl's terrorizing the school. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's a big old buddy. I, I, was on, I, t- I think I told y'all this one time. I was on a plane with his white dad, and he's like, I think your daughter was in my daughter's class. Yeah. And he showed a picture of Gary Allen with them little white kids. She looked like Shaq in that class. I said, who the fuck did her hair? And why she got on her granddaddy pants? I was on the road with my husband. I get Gary Allen dressed up motherfucking self. <laughs> That's key. You wanna you wanna you want tips on how to to work through the stuff? Message Gariana. Yeah, I mean, and also, yeah, we just want you guys. To, hey, we gotta live in this country together. Ain't nobody going back to Africa. I don't know nobody in Africa. England. Where nobody? Go? You ain't going back to England. Why can't we just live in this motherfucking? Teach each other how to season salt the chicken, Taco Tuesday, and enjoy each other. If you start calling out your racist friends, and I'm gonna start calling out Gariana Moore. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. And we thank y'all for joining us on another episode of The Pat Down. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another episode of The Pat Down. Make sure you check out my website at misspatcomedy.com for all of my social media, my tour dates, my book. Make sure you spread the word about my podcast. Please rate and review. Please rate and review and share. Thank y'all so much, y'all. I've been Miss Pat.